بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب as a reminder to myself and to my brothers and sisters always remember to 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 make dhikr as often as possible to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible and remember those special adhkar for special situations like for one entering the restroom and when one is going to enter the restroom one of the manners of entering the restroom is saying a supplication before you enter and this is seeking refuge in Allah from the male and female shayateen because the shayateen like filthy places so the restroom and those places akramakum Allah where you're going to uh, use the restroom are places uh, of filth and places that you should seek refuge before entering into them and that's a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters because sometimes we get sloppy and sometimes and, and forget or we remember when we're inside or as we're going in so try your best to take a quick second if you can and do that make make the supplication and another one of the manners is entering with your left foot enter with your left foot and when you leave enter with your right uh leave with your right foot those are some of the adab related to the bathroom let's look at that hadith the hadith of anas anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ana ana nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha dakhala khala qal allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubth wal khaba'ith ruahu bukhari wa muslim ayal ahbab the hadith of anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the uh, the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he used to go to the restroom he would say o oh allah i seek verily i seek refuge in you from the male and female devils and so the prophet alayhi salatu salam would say that before entering the restroom and some of the benefits we gain from this is it shows as sheikh ali bisam uh, relates that it is recommended to say this dua before uh, if someone wants to enter the restroom and that is to, to in order to protect themselves from the shayateen and something that's very important with this as we recently read one of the fatawa and translated it's on on the on the web uh, the youtube page where sheikh salim and fuzan was asked about this how to protect from the ayn how to protect from the evil eye and things like this and he he, he mentioned in general you know if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to uh, you know allows a person to be affected by that then they're going to be affected but one of the things he said is it could be possibly that the person forgot maybe even just once to remember that dua those those supplications of before you sleep or something and some of us we don't pray any of we don't do any of those supplications before we sleep when waking up we don't remember any of those at the car we don't try to to get them and even things like this going into the restroom so you know what if that's the case of those people who forget one time what about us who become sloppy with that and sometimes don't do it at all and some people they don't even make the supplication at all before entering the restroom so they haven't sought any protection in a law from the jinn and from the shayateen so we have to be conscious of that ayul ahbab and try our best to protect ourselves another benefit of this hadith is that the one one of the ways that the shayateen uh, affect and harm the servant is that they try to get them to get nudges on them filth on them impurities upon them in order to uh, uh harm that person's prayer to harm their prayer so this is why it is important to seek refuge in Allah from this and from them and their evil another benefit this hadith the sheikh mentions he said it's an obligation to be away from nudges that we we should be away from impurities and we should take the pro- appropriate steps to uh to be away from impurities you know making proper istinja and having the proper things like water and and or whatever we need to to clean ourselves and making this dua as well 
And one of the things he mentioned is because the lack of, when a person does not do this, this is also one of the reasons, as is mentioned in another hadith that we've read on countless occasions, where it's one of the reasons for the punishment of the grave is that a person not properly purifying them. And this is the hadith. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam murra bi qabarain faqal innuhum li yu'adhiban wa ma yu'adhiban fi kabir amma ahrahuma fakana la yastatiru min al-bawu wa amma akhir fakana yamshi bin namima. The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he was walking by some graves and he said, verily the inhabitants of those graves are being punished. And they're not being punished for something that they think, feel is great or big. And he says, as for one of them, he's being punished because he didn't uh, properly clean himself uh, when he was using the restroom. Making proper istinja. La yastinja bin al-bol is one of the narrations. And as for the other, he used to carry tales of slander. Namima. You know, carry tales throughout the community in order to cause fitna and problems between the brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect us from this. And mashallah, tabarakallah, sounds like there's a hawk around here somewhere. And it's getting very cold. This place is called Lake Pratt. Or this, yeah, this is Lake Pratt. And this is mashallah, tabarakallah, the lake is frozen, which I didn't expect it to be. So this is just a little something about where I'm at right now. And since it's getting colder and getting close to the Salat al-Asr, I need to start hiking out of here so that I can get out of here before it gets night. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the al-nafiruz kintayibu wa amalam al-taqabbilan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyan Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.